This guide is going to cover everything you need to know about medical and barrack trauma. We are going to be covering afflictions, medical treatments, specific treatments, medicine, and stimulants. Barotrauma is still an early access game. Some of what we're about to discuss may be out of date depending on when you view it. As such, everything is subject to change. So starting off, we need to talk about different afflictions and move into treatments later. Afflictions are the different damage types in barotrauma. These are caused by different weapons, monsters, medicines, and diseases throughout the game. When an affliction is caused, it has a strength modifier that dictates how much damage is done. This is normally from strength 0 to 100, but there are some exceptions. First off for afflictions, we have internal damage. This covers six different types of damages, such as broken bones, bites, and wounds. For internal damage, it reduces vitality one per strength level. Internal damage is caused by lots of different things in the game, including other afflictions, weapons, monsters, explosions, fall damage, and the outside environment. Next on the afflictions list is burning. This is identical to internal damage where it has a strength range of 0 to 100 and reduces vitality 1 per strength level. This is caused most commonly by fires, explosions and weapons. Following on from burning, we have low oxygen. This is caused by drowning as well as certain medication. It has a strength of 0 to 200 where 0 to 50 does nothing, but 50 plus can reduce vitality by up to 200%. Next on the afflictions list, we have bleeding. This damage type triggers vitality loss between 0 to 10, depending on the strength level. However, unlike the previous three, this effect diminishes over time and will heal itself. In addition to the reduction in vitality, bleeding can also trigger a second affliction, blood loss. Blood loss is a damage over time affliction and has two tiers of vitality loss. The first is between 5 to 45 strength, where you will lose between 0 and 0 0.75 vitality per second. The second tier triggers at strength levels 46 and above, where you will lose between 0 0.75 and 2 vitality per second. Our next affliction is stun. This does not reduce your vitality, but as the name suggests, it prevents you from movement or taking actions. The stun affliction can last for a maximum of 30 seconds, although you can stun lock a target permanently if you time your attacks correctly. High pressure also deserves a quick mention here. However, the only way to treat it is by not being exposed to it. So grab a diving suit ASAP to counteract the effects. Next, we have the Husk Infection. This is a parasitic affliction that is received from the following. Other humans that have been infected, from husk monsters, and there is also a chemical that can be used to inject players with the husk infection. The husk infection is commonly found on salvage wreck missions, although I have experienced husk monsters leaving their wreck and attempting to board my submarine. Once you have the husk infection, you will begin to lose control of your character. This is until it takes full control of the body. Then it will begin to attack other players in an attempt to infect them and spread the parasitic infection. The husk infection grows in strength every 0.3 seconds, meaning at maximum you will have about five and a half minutes before it takes over. Notably on this one, you will be unable to chat or use the radio at some point after the two and a half minute mark, and you are unaware that you yourself have the husk infection for at least the first two and a half minutes. Next we have nausea. This will stun your character for up to 1.7 seconds and see them visibly vomit onto the submarine. Nausea has a strength of 0 to 100. This causes organ damage of 0 0.5 for each vomit and if left alone, decays by itself for one strength every second. Next, we have psychosis, which is a very interesting affliction. Whilst this does not do any form of damage, you will experience imaginary fires, floods, and sounds, which can seriously disrupt your gameplay as you start to run around looking for a fire extinguisher to an imaginary fire. Psychosis is caused by using other medicines and chemicals in the game, which will increase 
increase its strength to a maximum of 100. This affliction will decay by 0.1 per second if left alone. Next, we have afflictions caused by opiate overusage. We will cover overhealing later on in this video, but essentially this meta affliction is caused by opiate usage. These are the same opiates that are used to heal you from other afflictions. There are three stages, each with multiple tiers and effects. Starting off with opiate withdrawal, it can reduce vitality from 0 to 200 depending on its strength, and can cause nausea of strength 30. But if left alone, it will decay at a maximum of 0.2 strength per second. Following on from that, we have opiate addiction. At strength levels below 80, this will increase opiate withdrawal by 0.25 strength per second. And above strength 80, it will reduce vitality by up to 20 strength points and add an opiate withdrawal of 0.5 strength per second. This will decay on its own by a maximum of 0.1 per second. For the final affliction here, we have overdose. Below strength 50, the user experiences slight screen distortion. And above 50, it will reduce vitality up to 200 and reduce speed by 50%. Left alone, this one will decay at a strength level of 0.5 per second. For our next affliction, we have poisons. We have morbuzine, sufferin, deliramumine, and cyanide poisoning. These are caused by different weapons and specific chemicals. All of them grow over time in strength and eventually lead to death, except deliramumine, which will result in psychosis. Last on the list for the affliction section is radiation sickness. This applies a burn per second that increases in strength over time. It starts off at 0.0025 vitality per second and moves all the way up to 0.02 per second, depending on the current strength level. Next, we need to talk about medical skill level. Each treatment has a medical skill level requirement. This does not prevent you from using a treatment, but it will impact how successful a treatment is. So as an example, morphine requires a medical skill level of 30 and having this level will heal the target for 50 internal, 50 burn, and reduce opiate withdrawal by 30. On the negative side, it will increase the low oxygen affliction by strength 20. It will add five strength to opiate addiction and 10 to opiate overdose. But using morphine with medical skill level below 30 will cause the following. It will only heal the target for 25 internal and 25 burn, but the opiate withdrawal is still the same for 30. It will also increase the low oxygen affliction by strength 30, opiate addiction by 25, and opiate overdose by strength 20. So there are large changes in the effects of medication based on your current skill level. Next, on to treatments. Rather than explaining each treatment and all its cures for each affliction, instead, what I'm going to do is give a rundown of common treatments and some special cases. For general healing, we are going to be looking at bandages, opiates, and liquid packs. Starting off, we have two types of bandages, plasticeal and the regular bandage. These mostly treat bleeding and burning afflictions, with the plasticeal variant healing more. Next, we're looking at opiates. This covers opium, morphine, and fentanyl, and their respective cure strengths are listed in that order. If you have a character that has low vitality, any of the opiates just listed will probably help you out. These will be your go-to healing solutions for most afflictions in the game. There is also the pomegranate, but honestly speaking, its cure strength is just too low. As such, it's only good as a top-up and not as a main solution. Finally, there are liquid packs. This includes saline, blood, and alien blood. All of these will help to mitigate the strength effects of blood loss. It will not cure the underlying causes, but as blood loss compounds, it is recommended to have some to mitigate as much as possible. 
So what I just mentioned does oversimplify healing. However, if you are just starting out, this will be enough to deal with the majority of afflictions. If you are playing the medic class in the game, I recommend that at all times you carry some of the generic treatments and medicines just mentioned. This now brings us on to specific healing. There are certain afflictions that can only be cured with specific medication. Low oxygen, for example, which can be caused by everything on the opiates list, requires specific oxygen oxygen medication to treat. To cure this, you can use anabolic steroids, hypozine, diazazine, and liquid oxygenite. As opiates are good at treating most afflictions in the game, there is a balance to ensure you don't keep stacking those heals. If you use too much opiate-based healing in quick succession, you can receive the three opiate afflictions, as mentioned in the afflictions section. The best way to cure these afflictions is by using naloxone or stabilazine. This healing mechanic is not just restricted to opiates. Most medication in the game usually have side effects. So unfortunately, you may cure a character of an affliction only to cause another affliction. But rather than go down that rabbit hole of meta healing, the majority of side effects are minor in comparison to what you are treating. And most things do decay over time. It's a very interesting and complex mechanic that adds some real depth to the medic profession in Barotrauma. Next, we're going to look at Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation, or CPR. There will be times when a character loses consciousness. This is either due to low oxygen or low vitality. In the case of low oxygen, CPR on its own will work to bring a character back to life. However, if the vitality lost was due to a different affliction, you may need some additional medication to bring them back. Up next, we have a medical weapon, the syringe gun. The syringe gun can be fired from a distance and be loaded with chemicals. This includes medicines and poisons. It can take up to four doses and the firing range is quite considerable with a low drop off, usually covering more than what you can see on screen. This has multiple use cases and situational advantages. When outside the submarine, you move slower, meaning it's harder to reach other crewmates who may require healing. Now, being able to fire medication over a distance, you can heal multiple crewmates with medication in emergency situations. It's also great for healing the husk infection at distance, which can reduce the chance of infecting the medic. And for poisons, there is a special mention. There is a chemical called raptor bane extract. This does damage specific to mud raptors, as mud raptors are heavily armored, which makes it difficult to penetrate with conventional weapons. One of the only drawbacks for using the syringe gun is that when a chemical hits the target, it applies the minimum skill level to that target. For example, if we take morphine again and look at internal damage, morphine requires a medical skill level of 30 to use, and at full strength, it would heal at 50 internal damage. However, shooting morphine from the gun, regardless of your skill level, would only heal the target for 25 internal damage, which is the minimum healing for characters using it under the level 30 medical skill level. Now that we have covered medicines and treatments for afflictions, I wanted to cover stimulants. These are specific medicines that will boost your character's abilities and resistances in game. First on the list, we have slow metabolism. This has a strength range of 0 to 600 and increases any other stimulant effects by up to 100%. This of course is based off the current strength level. It is gained by using tonic liquid, which will add 300 strength to the buff. So in practice, if you use two tonic liquids, one after the other, you will receive 100% duration to any other buffs you apply. This effect decays one strength per second, meaning that two tonics will last you for 600 seconds or 10 minutes. Next, we have hyperactivity. This will increase your running speed by 48%. Again, it has a strength range of zero to 600 and decays by one per second. This is gained by methamphetamine. This will increase strength by 420 if you have the correct medical skill level 
level of 35 to use, and by 300 if you don't. You can also use Hyperzine, which will add 400 strength. As a bonus, this has no medical level requirement to use. On to our next stimulant, Husk Infection Resistance. This also has a strength of 0 to 600. It applies up to 75% increased resistance to the Husk Infection. To gain this buff, you will need to use Broad Spectrum Antibiotics. If you have the required skill level of 25, it will apply the full 600 strength for a single use, or 300 strength if your skill level is below that. This effect decays one per second. Next, we have Psychosis Resistance. This has a strength from 0 to 600, and can apply up to 75% increased resistance to Psychosis. This is gained by using Ethanol, which will increase its strength for the full 600 on use. There is a small note here about about pipe tobacco. Whilst I can't get an exact number on how much resistance it applies, the tooltip says it will increase resistance by 0.1 strength per second smoked. So at a guess, it will add between 8 to 10% resistance to psychosis. Next up, we have Vigor. Again, a 0 to 600 strength stimulant, this one could increase your max vitality by up to 200%. This is gained by using anabolic steroids steroids, which will add 420 strength if you have the required skill level of 35, or 300 strength if you are under. This can also be gained by using the chemical hypozine, which will add 400 strength again with the bonus of not requiring a skill level to use. Vigor will also decay by one strength per second. Finally on the list, we have Paralysis Resistance, which breaks the mold here. This has a strength of 0 to 800 and provides up to 300% resistance to paralysis. This is gained by using Anaparalyzant, which requires a very high skill level of 64 but will add the full 800 strength if you do. If your skill level is below that, it will still add 390 strength. However, this one decays at the faster rate of 5 per second. So, in summary for this section, there are definitely a lot of great stimulants out there that really give you a huge edge in gameplay, if used in the right combination and situation. As a recommendation, Tonic Liquid in Hyperzine is very overpowered in the game right now, as the speed and vigor buffs make you a real force to be reckoned with. So, we've now talked about afflictions, treatments, and stimulants, but where do you get all these things from? Well, there are three main sources. Stations, monsters, and plants. Different stations sell different medication, but in general, most medication can be bought from all stations. Although, if your entire crew gets the husk infection or radiation poisoning, it can be very difficult to have enough specific medication to treat everyone on board. For the second method, all you have to do is loot the various monsters you come across in Barotrauma. Crawlers, hammerheads, and eggs are the best source of alien blood, saline, and swim bladders. And you can get adrenaline glands from thalami found on shipwrecks. The final method of gathering medication is similar to mining ores. Plants can be found outside the submarines, along the ocean floors, and inside caves. They do not require a plasma cutter to harvest, just right-click and gather. These plants will need to be deconstructed to get the base resources for use in different medical applications. Once you have all your base medical resources, you can use the medical fabricator to combine and make the different medicines and chemicals you will need on your journey. That covers all the medical specific items. There is, however, two special mentions I would like to share. Compound N and Volatile Compound N, which are both craftable from the medical fabricator, are in fact explosives. These deal a huge amount of damage, 150 structural, 200 burning, 50 laceration, and can stun a target for up to 5 seconds. They have an explosive radius of 6 meters, and the volatile version will explode on its own as it decays over time. These can be loaded into depth charge shells and railgun shells to add extra damage on impact. 
Whilst these aren't necessarily cheaper than other explosives, they are an alternative and can be bought at stations. So are a good mix when you need as much firepower as possible. So in closing, there are a few things I specifically left out. This includes being drunk, paralysis, and hallucinating. The final thing I wanted to showcase was a little known mechanic of self-healing. The expression sleep it off does play a role for healing in the game. If you sleep on a bed, you will heal 0.05 vitality per second without the need for medication. Specifically, you can heal internal damage, blood loss, bleeding, nausea, opiate withdrawal, opiate addiction, and being drunk. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of how damage effects and healing work in the game. I have left links in the description below for the specific Barotrauma wiki sections if you'd like to know more. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. If you want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, peace. Na, na, na.